I am determined to make this soap back to what it once was in its glory day. And so for that reason, this is going to get a little bit technical here so that I can record what exactly I did and what my plan is for the future. I poured the black at one five minutes later 30 and then the original pink at like 145 degrees and then I poked some holes in with my spoon because I saw you guys recommended that I need to incorporate the pink with the black with the spoon and so I went ahead and I did that five minutes later and then I poured the second color vermilion at about 150 and then I waited five minutes and then I poured the third color ver uh, chartreuse at about 150 as well. Did I say 550 before? I meant 150. That would be incredibly high temperature to pour that. And then add the buttons on top. And so we'll just have to wait and see what the cut looks like on this. But my initial thoughts on this is that I poured the black when it was already too set. So I think that the first layer of pink, I noticed that it was kind of floating at the top instead of sinking down further into the blacks. And I think that's going to stop the vermilion and the chartreuse from sinking down as well. Welcome back to part one of trying to recreate my Coraline soap that I made from last year with the beautiful chunky swirls. So first step, we're going to look at the sides here and it looks like just as I suspected that pink didn't get all the way to the bottom, but we'll never know until we cut into the soap. So let's go ahead and slice into that thing. And I do like the light pink swirls, but it looks like the vermilion and the chartreuse just swirled together at the very top and didn't seep down into the black. So what that tells me is that the black needs to be hotter when I first pour it so that it allows the goat milk soap to seep further down into the black and I think I'm going to switch this up to maybe 135 pouring the black next time because I poured at 130 and the difference between 130 and 135 was I could tell when I was mixing the black was really really staggering so I think just letting it be a couple degrees warmer before I pour it so it's not as thick when like and not as set would help it out a lot. This is part two of me trying to replicate my beautiful Coraline soap from last year and get those thick chunky swirls and this time I poured the black at 135 degrees and the pink at 155. Waited five minutes. Five minutes. Poke some holes in there with a spoon and then poured the vermilion and I poured the vermilion at 155 as well. Waited five minutes and then poured the chartreuse. Five minutes straight down the middle and I'm a little bit more hopeful with this one because it looks like the chartreuse pierced through the vermilion and it looked like the vermilion pierced through the black because there was some swirl of the black and vermilion after you saw that it had set for five minutes there was some black at the top so I'm hoping that the swirls will be a little bit deeper into the black and you could tell when I poured the light pink that it was going deeper into the black and I was trying to pour it from a higher distance above the soap as well so hopefully that helped a lot too I was out of black buttons um so I added one there at the end but it's okay it's no big deal don't worry about it <laughs> Now all we have to do is wait for the cut. Welcome back to try two of trying to recreate my original Coraline soap design. So first thing we're gonna check is the sides and bottom of this loaf. And it looks like that light pink did seep through. You can see there on the sides and the bottom, the tendrils coming down. Let's cut into it. The pink definitely went through, but it looks like the vermilion and the chartreuse didn't sink all the way through. But maybe it'll get better at the more we cut it. So let's, ooh, we're, okay. We are getting somewhere because it came through a little bit it. there's a little bit of chunk there you see but it's not coming through as deep as we want it to here's what i'm wondering i think maybe the temperature is right we should pour it at the right time but maybe not wait as long before pouring the vermilion and chartreuse and i'm thinking maybe counterintuitively if we pour closer to the actual soap loaf so instead of from a higher distance a lower distance with the soap being so hot it won't have those like almost web-like texture this is try three of me trying to recreate my Coraline soap that I made last year and did not write down the instructions to do so I'm trying to recreate those beautiful chunky swirls and this time I poured the black at 137 and what my plan was is that I was going to pour the colors the light pink vermilion and chartreuse very quickly one right after the other because I was hoping that it would drop down the swirls into the black faster if I didn't let the black set up as much. And so I poured the black at 137 and then immediately poured the light pink at 155. And then I looked back at my previous footage from last year and I did mix it in with a spoon. So I went ahead and I did that 
right after I poured it in. And then I waited two minutes and then I poured the vermilion at 160. Then I waited four minutes because I was getting the color ready for the chartreuse and I poured that at 160 as well. And then of course I added the top layer and all the buttons on and you, you guys know the drill by now. Welcome back to the third try of me trying to recreate my Coraline soap from last year. First thing we're gonna take a look at is the sides and the bottom. I am not super excited by this because it doesn't look like I can see much swirls from the bottom or the sides, but only the cut will tell. And it kind of looks like all the colors got muddled together. So a little bit of a two steps back kind of situation. So here's what I'm thinking for the future. I'm thinking maybe pouring the black at 140 and then swirling it with the spoon because that's what I did last year for it with the light pink and then waiting eight minutes and then pouring the vermilion at let's say like maybe like 170 and then waiting another eight minutes and pouring the chartreuse at like 180 because I think it, the higher colors will kind of melt through the black as the black is getting cooler the higher temperature will cause the colors to kind of drip through the black and melt the black surrounding it all right try four of trying to recreate my Coraline soap from last year with those beautiful chunky unky unky swirls in it now last time I decided that I was going to wait longer in between pouring the vermilion and the chartreuse to try to get the vermilion and chartreuse to not swirl into each other but swirl more into the black and I was going to pour them hotter. I also decided to take these time lapses in between to see if we could see the vermilion sink deeper into the black and you can kind of see it just a little bit in the center there and I also did it when I poured the chartreuse to see if it would sink into the black because if it is hot enough and if the if the temperatures are right then it's going to kind of drip into the black and you're going to see more of the black peeking through and these soaps are going to be fragrance free so if you have sensitive skin you can get these and they're going to be discounted because i'm not going to put the buttons on them until i get the swirls right darn it but we won't know until we see the cut so be sure to stay tuned welcome back to try four of recreating my Coraline soap to get those juicy juicy chunks in it and so what we're going to do first is look at the sides of the soap and it looks pretty good you can see that the light pink swirled into the black soap which is promising i'm not seeing a whole lot of vermilion or chartreuse coming in from the bottom or the sides so the only thing we have to do left is cut into it and i'm back in the freaking building it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. You know, sometimes sometimes you do a trial and it turns out exactly the same as your first trial and it's really frustrating, but you know, you learn from it and move on. I think I'm just going, I think <sighs> I'm going to rewatch my original like video, like probably 50 million times now and take notes like a crazy person. I know you guys have tagged me in it and I appreciate that. I do know where it is and I like i i have watched it i'm gonna watch it again though hello sorry i was gone i've been sick this is try number five of my Coraline soap um i poured the black out 150 and then the light pink at 150 also at very close to the black so you can see it's kind of swirling already which is beautiful and then i took my spoon and i swirl 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 it in if you guys haven't seen all the other parts uh i'm trying to get the chunky unky swirls then i waited eight minutes then i poured this vermilion at 170 and then i took a time lapse after it to see if it would sink down into the black and it did look at how beautiful that looks Eight minutes later, I poured the chartreuse at 165. I am really excited about this one. I poured the vermilion and the chartreuse at a very high distance away from the soap. Um, so hopefully it worked out. And then I took a time lapse of the chartreuse going into the black as well. So hopefully I get those chunky, unky, unky swirls. But sorry for being on. And also, um, I made these soaps before I got sick. And this is just me uploading content that I had filmed previously. So... I think we're getting somewhere. Welcome back to try five of trying to recreate my Coraline inspired soap with chunky unky swirls. The first thing we're gonna do is look at the sides and bottom of the soap and it looks promising. You can even see a little bit of the vermilion poking through the bottom there. So I know that the vermilion seeped through. That has not happened on any of these soap tries before. So my hopes sky high. Let's cut into this baby and woo! That is the closest that we have ever gotten. I love it. The chunks are a lot deeper than I would like. The black isn't as like as vibrant as opposed to the original, but it is this is definite progress, guys. I'm thinking 
pour the black at like 148 instead of 150 and then I think taking longer time so I waited eight minutes in between pouring the vermilion and chartreuse on these but I think maybe waiting 10 minutes just so that there's a little bit more of a difference between the vermilion and the chartreuse and then I'll poke the light pink in with the spoon instead of scooping it and we'll see how this goes try six of my Coraline soap trying to get those chunky unky unky swirls and I saw lots of you guys comment and say that I should try the same thing that I did last time but just not not stirring it in with a spoon so I go ahead and did that I poured the black at 150 and then the light pink at 150 as well waited eight minutes here's a, there's a time lapse of that and then poured the chartreuse at 170 and then the vermilion also at 170 that was backwards the vermilion first and then the chartreuse at 170 waiting eight minutes between each layer and with these soaps i think i mentioned before but i'm making these without fragrance oil and without the buttons just because like i'm trying to get the technique right right now so it's just like cranking them out hopefully this is the one it's very interesting when i make the soap in batches like in the cauldron it seems to have a different consistency than when i like quickly melt the soap in the microwave so that may affect how this comes out too all right here's the soap cutting for try six of my Coraline inspired soap where we're trying to recreate those chunky unky unky swirls first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the bottom and sides of the soap and it does look like i may have poured it a little bit too hot and this is interesting because this is kind of confirming what i had long suspected but never known to be true which is that when i melt soap down in my double boiler the temperature means different things than if I melt it down quickly in the microwave for example like I poured this at 150 the black at 150 and then 170 and it performed way differently it was a lot more thin than it was when I had it from the double boiler I don't know why that is but if anybody's like sciency please let me know so you see when we cut into it it kind of volcanoes where you can see it's making really thin wispy strands. I think it looks beautiful, but it's not like suspended in the black like we were hoping it was going to be. It's been a long time since I saw you, so let's do a little recap on what we're doing here. This is my Coraline inspired soap I made last year. It came out with chunky unky swirls and I've been trying forever to try to recreate that. So far I've done six trials. Last time I did a trial, but I did it when I cut the soap and microwaved it instead of using a double boiler. This time I'm trying to recreate it using the same temperature as I did before, but using the double boiler and seeing if I get better results. And that's all you missed on Artistic Antic Celise. So this is try seven of trying to recreate my Coraline soap to get the chunky yunky swirls. And I poured the black at 150 and the light pink at 150 as well, waited eight minutes, then poured the vermilion at 170 and the chartreuse at 170. This is the same temperature that I did the last two times. However, I didn't use the spoon, which is different than the second to last time. And I didn't microwave the soap in the microwave, which is different than the last last time. We'll see if not using the spoon provides those chunky unky swirls like you guys are hoping you're gonna have to wait until tomorrow because this soap needs to set overnight before i cut it welcome back to try seven of trying to recreate my Coraline inspired soap with the chunky unky swirls here we go let's look at the bottom no color a little bit of a red flag but the sides look pretty good let's slice into this baby and you're you're mad at me i'm not mad i'm just disappointed it's not bad. I want to just tweak a couple of things and see how that works. I think I like the temperature that the light pink and the black is at, but maybe making the vermilion and the chartreuse a little bit hotter to try to encourage them to melt more into the black would be a good idea. I know it says here that we already tried throwing Tahani under the bus, but maybe we should revisit that. Throw her a little bit harder maybe under a bigger bus. And I think I'll do a different motion when I pour the light pink and the vermilion too to try and wait a little bit so that I don't get those like swirly curves on the side. This is try eight of trying to recreate my Coraline inspired soap from last year. And I'm just gonna run through this really, really quickly because I did infinitesimal changes and it required infinitesimal results. And so we're just going to scrap all this. Now this is try nine of my Coraline inspired soap. Before this try, I went back to my original recording last year that I have on YouTube and I studied it. I put on my glasses and I went to work. Last year, I didn't have my double boiler. So I'm going to be doing this in the microwave. Second of all, I poked some holes in the black 
black layer before pouring the light pink layer. So I didn't pour them one right after the other. It looks like I let the black layer harden up a little bit before I poured the pink layer. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I remember this specifically. I waited 10 minutes in between pouring the light pink layer, the vermilion and the chartreuse. So we're going to be waiting 10 minutes. Now it's just down to the temperatures. These ones I did at 135 and then 150 and 150 for the pink vermilion and chartreuse. So we're going to be going through that and I will see you tomorrow for the cut of try nine. Welcome back to try nine of trying to create my Coraline inspired soap with the chunky yunky swirls. Let's check the sides and bottom of the soap bar. Oh. Ah. Mmm. There was somebody in the comments of the last video that pointed out that that green is not going to go through and you're right and the vermilion didn't either and neither, neither did the chartreuse because you probably noticed when I was punching the holes in with my spoon, the black was way too thick. I poured it at too cool of a temperature, but hey, that's why we're doing these trials and we're using the microwave, which is different than the double boiler. The temperature acts differently when you use the microwave than the double boiler. Let me tell you something, let me tell you something. All right. Let me tell you something, let me tell you something. So now we know we need to pour the next one hotter. We poured this last one at like 135. We're going to crank it up to about 140 and then pour the vermilion chart chartreuse and light pink at about 150 160 10 is just such a good round number you know we had to make it to the double digits of tries that was inevitable i think this is try 10 of me trying to recreate my Coraline inspired soap so for this one we're going to pour the black at 140 and then we're going to let it set for a little bit to develop a film on top we're gonna stab that with a spoon multiple times a spoon morty a spoon and then we're going to pour in the light pink and we're gonna kind of scoop and push the pink into the black wait 10 minutes pour the vermilion wait 10 minutes and then pour the chartreuse just to manage expectations for you guys just so you guys know what to expect moving forward when i do eventually if i do eventually get this soap correct i'm going to do that same process twice just to make sure that i can replicate those results like and then i'm going to be adding the fragrance oil in and then doing it again to make sure that i definitely know how to do it this is try 10 of me trying to recreate my Coraline inspired soap this is the soap cutting and i lied to you you might have noticed that when i made this soap i said that i was going to swirl in the light pink with my spoon after pouring it and we're going to kind of scoop and push the pink into the black and i did not do that and the reason is is because i got spooky ookity because i saw that it was already going down into the black layer and i was like ooh, i found my pants but now i'm missing my <laughs> let's slice into this baby and see what we fine and yeah! those are some chunky yunky swirls they're not as deep as i would have liked but i think that that is as close as we have gotten to what we are trying to get to in this whole series oh this this is beautiful it only took 10 tries but that is as close as we have gotten or am i just being completely delusional am i trying to see things that aren't there do you guys think that this is the closest we have gotten to the chunky yunky swirls that we want this is try 11 of remaking my Coraline inspired soap until we get the chunky yunky swirls and if you guys haven't seen try 10 i definitely recommend checking it out because that is the closest that we have gotten so far i am swirling in the light pink with my spoon and then i am also going to pour the vermilion and the chartreuse at a little bit of a higher temperature to try to get the swirls to go deeper into the black soap that's all we're changing but the rest of it staying the same we're pouring the black at 140 and then the vermilion chartreuse and the light pink at about like 160 165, 170-ish. But I wanted your guys' opinion. I want to celebrate once we finally finish this Coraline series with some merch. And I was trying to think of like some ideas for like t-shirts or maybe beanies or something like, or stickers. Something that's like, I watched all of the Coraline soap making series and all I got was this lousy t-shirt or some something along those lines. But I would love your guys' suggestions. If you have any ideas, please put them in the comments and stay tuned for part two where we cut into the soap and see if this is the one. So can for a try 11 of trying to recreate my Coraline inspired soap with the chunky yunky swirls this may be the last time i ever do an experiment with this soap but it's up to you guys to tell me whether or not this is the end if you guys want me to do more trials i can definitely do more trials but we're gonna go ahead and slice into this baby and see how it looks on the inside and 
Oh my gosh, that is some chunky, unky, unky swirls. I think this looks really cool. I think swirling with the spoon definitely helped the swirls go down deeper. There are still some wispies from the light pink. So if you guys aren't into that and want me to try something else, let me know in the comments. Here's the comparison from the Try 10, Try 11, and the original chunky, unky swirls. Also, I made a little rough draft of some merch. Boom. Let me know what you think about that. This would be a unisex t-shirt and it would be available in extra small up to 3XL. I look forward to hearing if we are almost done with the Coraline series or if you guys want me to keep testing. This is hopefully the last try of the Coraline inspired soap remake. The reason it's the last try is because I've added the fragrance oil and I have added the buttons on top. So I go ahead and I poured this at 140 and then I waited a little bit. Then I stabbed the top with a spoon, poured in the light pink at 150-ish, 160-ish. Swirled the light pink into the black with my spoon. I waited 10 minutes, poured the vermilion in at 170. I noticed that the vermilion was not sinking into the black as well as I had hoped, so I poked that in with my spoon a little bit. Waited 10 minutes and then poured the chartreuse in at 170. Waited until the soap was set, then added my buttons on top with some light pink. Well, it's like a corally color actually, and the reason I put it in the corally color is because that is the color that the, the cushion of the button box is that corally color. Guess this hasn't ended yet. <laughs> I don't want to give you guys any false hope. This soap cutting did not did not produce the chunky unky swirls and it was because the vermilion was not hot enough to poke through the black even with the help of the spoon. I am going to try this again and learn from my mistakes and really heat up the vermilion and the chartreuse and pour them a little bit earlier into the black. Adding the fragrance oil is cooling down the soap a lot faster than it was when the fragrance oil was not added. So I think that is the mystery variable that caused this to not turn out super well. So next time I'm going to be pouring the black at the same temperature, 140, but then I'm going to be pouring the vermilion and the chartreuse at like 180, 190 to try to help it poke through the black. I'm sorry that this... <sighs> Lucky number 13, you know? 13 tries, best tries, I guess. Um, and then once I do the 13th try, I'll try to do it again to make sure that that can be replicated if that turns out to be the one. All right, for sure, for sure, this is the last try of the Coraline inspired soap. And that's because when I finished this soap, it looked just like when I had finished the original soap. So I, I'm putting it out there. I'm putting it on faith. This is going to be the last try. It has the fragrance oil. It has the buttons. I added it all. It's all perfect. It's going to be chunky, I promise, but I will cut into it tomorrow, so you are going to have to wait for that. It is sitting down in my downstairs office as we speak. I poured this at 140, the black, and then I poked it with a spoon, and then I poured in the pink, and then I swirled it in with a spoon. I kind of did like scooping motions instead of like mixing motions. Wait 10 minutes, and then poured the vermilion, microwaved the four ounces at 30 seconds, stirred it, then another 30 seconds to get it nice and hot, and then poured it at a higher distance, then wait 10 minutes and then same thing with the chartreuse 30 seconds stir 30 seconds pour straight down the middle and i do that because then the chartreuse kind of finds its way into the channels that the vermilion has already created so that's why i pour it down the middle i put it out into the universe that this was going to be the final soap and this is the time to see if this is the final soap with the chunky yunky swirls this is with the fragrance oil added and of course the buttons on top let's slice into this thing and do i make it done completely this is this is recreated i mean like in in try 11 or 10 whatever it was when i was like ooh, is this am i being delusional is this it and some people were like oh you should try to make the swirls chunkier this is chunky swirls this is what we wanted this is beautiful this is perfect this is the end oh my goodness war is over am i right am i right <laughs>